In this video, we will learn how to collect data in the Solstice app and how to manage responses as they come through into the portal. I'm now in the Solstice app. You can go there either through your browser by navigating to app.solstice.world or on your Android or iOS device if you download the Solstice app. I've logged in and I've deployed a survey to myself, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to start filling in a survey, in this case the ODF community survey. All I need to do here is on my smartphone start filling in the fields. So in my example I'm visiting a community and it has been declared ODF. So I shall select a date, it's done at the end of last month. The third question I have in my survey links this survey to a community that has been mapped. I can select it. If it's been created, I can select it from the list. If it has not yet been mapped, I will add a new one. If you're adding a new site, there are a few basic fields you need to fill in. First of all, select the privacy setting. If you set your site to be public, it means that is the site is visible to the world and it is also editable by any other user of Solstice. If you select it to protect it, the site is visible to the world, but only you and your organization can edit it. This is the recommended privacy setting, because it allows others to not do the same work over and over again in mapping the site and can build a richer picture of all the things related to it. If you select private, then the site is only visible to you or your organization and only, of course, editable by you or your organization. I will create the site as protected. I will give it a name. Description is optional, but the location is necessary. If I'm on my Android device or iOS device, I can use the current location button to pinpoint my position in the world using GPS. I can also use the map to pick a location and pin down on the map, or I can edit um, the coordinates and enter the latitude and longitude directly. I can also add one or more photos of the community. So I've selected the privacy status, entered a name and chosen the correct location for the community. Now I create it. This automatically then becomes part of the link for the survey with its own unique ID that the system understands only ever refers to that site. So now I'm ready to submit my data. I could also save this survey for later and come fill in more, or I can even discard my response. I'm going to submit. That's been done successfully. For the sake of an example, I will fill in another survey so we have more data to play with. Same process, select the survey. This time the community has not been declared ODF, so there is no date for it. And this one was for demonstration community one. I submit again. Now, the app needs to have a connection to the internet for the data to flow back up into the cloud. So what you want to look for is three recent complete messages for all the synchronizations. Data upload means that the data in your surveys has been sent to the cloud. Image upload is separate because images take up more space. Offline sync means that your own app has the latest information from the cloud, including the latest information about survey design, updates, and so on. Data upload has been done, so I should expect to see data on the portal. And that's what I'm going to do. I am now signing in as the manager of that survey. I go to the Surveys tab and find my survey. In that survey, I will then go to the Responses tab to start viewing the responses in real time. And here we see the two responses we have submitted in the Responses tab of the survey, both as pending. So I'm the manager who now needs to view this data and then decide to approve, reject or delete it. Let's look at the first response. I can just click into it. Okay, 
this was the second one we submitted. This looks good. So I approve it. The second one, let's imagine there's a mistake. There's no way it could have been declared ODF at that time. I will reject it and I will send a message back to the enumerator to uh, <coughs> instruct them to revisit some of the data. So now you see this response has been rejected and will not show up anywhere where final data is expected. Back on the enumerator side, let's synchronize the data. We should now see the rejected survey come up in the tasks view. So we see that the message was there, check the date, and then I realize, oh, I was off by two months. It was actually the end of March and not the end of May. Good catch. I will submit the data again and make sure it's uploaded again. This way, it's visible in the tasks tab under recently completed surveys, not rejected or draft. This is where I can also review the answers that I've submitted. Going back to the manager side once more, refreshing the page, we should see the response come back to the server, back to the cloud, as pending again with the amendments just made. As a manager, I can review these again. Aha, the data has been fixed. I'll approve this now. If necessary, I can export this data to PDF and I can view the history of the changes as well as start editing these responses myself whilst they're pending. You can also import or export responses to Excel using the export interface, which then produces a spreadsheet view that you can then um, analyze and edit as you see fit. So that's how the basics of collecting data in Solstice and managing responses work.